MSC is a cruise line that consistently gets mixed reviews. They are trying to tap into the lucrative U.S. market, and I have sailed MSC three times, and this latest cruise lived up to this same trend. Stay tuned to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly of the MSC Seaside. I recently did a four-night cruise on the MSC Seaside. This cruise went to Nassau, Bahamas, as well as their private island, Ocean Key Marine Reserve. I'm here to share my experiences with you so that you know what to expect when sailing on the MSC Seaside. Hi everyone and welcome. If you are new here, I am Doug and this is Seymour Seas, your cruise tips and planning channel where I hope to help you and your family pick, plan, and enjoy your next cruise vacation. If you find this video helpful in any way, please, as always, give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Thanks so much and let's get started. For this review, I'm again going to use Doug's ship score. If you're not familiar with that, it is a possible five-star rating in five different categories. This allows me to come up with an overall score for this ship and this sailing. The categories spell out the word ships. So we'll start with S for the ship itself. This is the age of the ship, the condition, the cleanliness, how easy it is is to get around. Then you have H for hotel. This is for the cabin as well as the entertainment on board. Moving on to I for itinerary. These are the ports of call that you visit. Is it a tender port? Is it a safe port? Are there lots of activities to do? Then you have P for plates. This is the food, all of the dining options available, the quality of the food. And then you end with S for service. Service is all of the customer facing, guest facing crew on board, like your cabin stateroom attendant, your bar staff, your dining room staff, guest services, everybody that's there to make your cruise an enjoyable one. Then we end with a final ship score for the cruise itself. Let's start with S for ship. Now, let me give you some statistics on the MSC Seaside. It was launched in 2017. It has a total double occupancy passenger load of 4,132. It has 1,413 crew members. It has 18 decks and a crew to passenger ratio of 2.9 to 1. Now, if you fill up the ship to its total capacity of over 5,000, that moves to a uh, ratio of 3.6 crew members to every passenger. This is much, much higher than the industry standard of about 2.5 to 2.6. So the lower the ratio, the better for the cruise passenger because there's more crew members to service all of your needs. As you check out the inside public areas of the ship, the main attraction is the four-story atrium, which is very, very beautiful. It has the crystal staircases that MSC is known for, and they also have above the atrium bar, you have an entertainment stage that was used quite often. There's also a theater that is somewhat on the small side, and as a note, it is extremely cold in there, so pack a sweatshirt or a long sleeve flannel shirt for the theater. For dining, there are two main dining rooms on deck five and six, just behind the atrium. This is for set dining as well as anytime dining and aria guests. There are two buffets on board. The main buffet, large buffet, is on deck eight, and there is a smaller buffet located on deck 16, just next to the main pool area. The Yacht Club dining room for Yacht Club guests will be located forward on the upper decks in the private closed off Yacht Club area. All of the specialty dining is located tucked away in a uh, area all its own on deck 16. The outside areas have a lot of outside space 
on the buffet on deck eight. And then there are several pools on board. The main pool is on deck 16 aft. There's also a uh, inside pool with a retractable roof called the jungle. And then down on deck seven aft, there is an adults only pool called the Miami Beach Pool. And to note, there's a very large smoking section in this area. There is a small kids club area and sports area for the kids and the teens with a full size basketball court where all of the sports activities are held. And then you also have a small arcade um, separated from the rest of the ship. In that area, you're also gonna find the Formula One simulator that MSC is known for, which is an added fee. And you also have a bowling alley with two lanes, which is also an added fee. All of the cabins are located on seven decks, nine through 15. There are two main elevator banks, which are smart elevators, meaning that you need to pick which floor you're going to prior to entering the elevator, and you're going to get an audible confirmation on which car is going to take you to that particular floor. The Yacht Club is on the upper decks covering multiple floors, and this is the ship within a ship design. They have their own dining room, and they also have their own pool deck as well as a lounge. There are many bars and lounges throughout this ship located on most of the open public decks. All of the pools will have a large bar with a limited number of staff, but they do have a lot of table servers that will go around and service all of the tables as well as the pool loungers. One thing to note, this particular ship does not have any type of sky lounge that you find on many different uh, styles of cruise ships. Two very popular spots on board are located in the sports bar as well as the seaside lounge. This is located just next to the gym and the spa. And what's nice about these two locations is they have access to an outside boardwalk and they're located on each side of the ship. These seem to be staffed appropriately and good service was uh, provided in each of those locations. The main atrium bar is always a very, very busy area, and I would suggest that you pack your patients for standing there at the bar because it is normally one or two people deep trying to get a cocktail either before dinner or uh, preparing to watch some of the lounge entertainment that is on the stage above that bar in that four-story atrium. One bar that is not necessarily very busy at all, according to some friends that I met on board, is the chocolatier area. This is an area on the ship where they sell their chocolate that they make on board, and it is a full service bar where you can sit down with limited seating, and it's normally not too busy. The casino on board is fairly small, and you must walk through this on deck six to get from front of the ship to the atrium. This is a very smoky environment. However, the bar seems to be very busy. So all of those different areas and venues that I just described goes towards my ship design score. Now, the atrium is very beautiful. It's nice. I love the different performing decks above the bar, but for a ship that holds over 4,000 people, I found this atrium to be very tight. You're looking over and you have to look all the way down before you can actually see what's going on. So I didn't find that too welcoming. Also, the elevator banks on this ship do not service the entire ship. The forward elevators, you always get blocked by the Yacht Club or the Aria area when you're utilizing those forward elevators. That Ship and ship concept takes up way too much of the forward uh, part of the ship. Also, accentuating the bad separation of spaces on this ship, the specialty dining is located forward on deck 16. If you did not know they were there, you would never find them. So I feel that it was a very, very strange 
uh, placement for all of the specialty dining. In addition, the pool areas have absolutely no complimentary food options available. There is a gelato station on the main pool on deck 16. However, that's an added fee. You can move forward from that pool to the small buffet where they do have some pre-made sandwiches, some mediocre pizza, as well as cookies in the afternoon. But I never saw a soft serve ice cream station or any of the other free type venues that you'd find on other cruise lines such as Royal Caribbean or Carnival. So though I think there's some very nice uh, parts of this ship, overall I thought it was very, very difficult to traverse and I never felt comfortable trying to find one location or the other. After going on 35 plus cruises, this is the first time that I was not able to figure out how to get around the ship by the end of the cruise. There are so many small individual public spaces and not enough, in my opinion, for the amount of passengers on board. So for a ship score, for design and ability to traverse, I'm going to give the MSC Seaside three stars. Next up is H for Hotel. This is the cabin review as well as the entertainment. My stateroom was on deck 10 port, somewhat midship forward, and it was a nice balcony stateroom. As you walked in the door, you had all of your controls. You do need to place your key card in the slot to control the electricity and air conditioning, as well as you do have two little buttons for do not disturb, as well as make up my room. The bathroom is going to be to your left as you walk in, and it's going to be on the smaller side. The sink is quite small and there's limited counter storage for you. There are a couple shelves and there is some storage underneath the sink. Now, the toilet location is going to be very tight, and if you're sitting, your knees actually might hit the sink area. Now, it does have a great shower. Water pressure was fantastic. Uh, it does have the acrylic plastic door rather than the shower curtain, and there are hooks for your towels. One thing to note, MSC does not provide you washcloths or tissues in your bathroom. The bed in this cabin was a king size bed. It was extremely comfortable. The linens were fantastic. I wish I would have had possibly a couple extra pillows. The closet is good sized, though there were only um, eight hangers. So if there were two people in this cabin, that might be a little bit limited, especially if you're doing more than a four night cruise. There were a few shelves with a safe on the top shelf, not big enough to hold a laptop. And there were two drawers underneath that. The bed was very close to the closet. So anyone sleeping on that side of the bed might be a little annoyed from that. There was only one USB port beside the bed and that was on the opposite side from the closet. You do have outlets on your desk. There are two US, two European, and two USB. So pretty plentiful there. And there was also a sleeper sofa. The balcony was standard size. It was quite nice. It had two chairs and a small table. And I found it very, very adequate and, and quite nice. The entertainment on board was pretty good to average. The main theater does have a show each night and it is shown at three different times, 7.30, 9.15, and 10.30. The theater itself is very, very cold. So make sure that you uh, pack a sweatshirt, a sweater, or a long sleeve shirt for the theater. Now, something about the stage, the stage design does not change at all for any of the shows. The only thing that changes is the extensive LED lighting at the back of the stage, making the stage look like it's different from one night to the next. On night one, there was a pretty good show called Peter Punk, which is an adaptation and loosely based on Neverland. 
The singers were very, very good. The dancers were great, and I found it enjoyable. On night two was a comedian, Mike Brody. He was very, very good. He interacted with the audience extremely well. And the later show was actually an adults only show. I didn't attend, but I heard it was really good. Night three in the main theater had a celebration of Michael Bublé. And there were two male singers. One was excellent and the other had such a thick accent that I did not stay for the entire performance. Night four was probably the best show, and this was very, very popular with guests, and it was a celebration of Michael Jackson. This was a really well-done show, and it seems that the main male singer was cast specifically for this show. There is a matinee on the last sea day uh, by a woman named Wendy. She's part of one of the lounge groups and she was given her first opportunity for a main stage performance. She did fantastic and it celebrates all the divas in her career. You really don't want to miss that one. There was also entertainment in some of the lounges as well as the atrium bar with that entertainment stage above the bar from time to time and it did get a little bit crowded in there. Late night on the pool deck on deck 16. They also had a few parties, one of them being the white party, which is not very well advertised, but a lot of people did attend and it seemed like they had a good time. There are a few afternoon activities. They were selling bingo cards. I did not attend, but I did attempt to attend MasterChef one of the afternoons, which was in the main theater and was a complete waste of time. Uh, most people found it pretty silly. There were also some games by the pool, but it's separated from the main pool, so participation was very, very low in the pool games. And there's also ping pong uh, near the jungle pool, as well as a pool table downstairs by the Miami Beach pool. With both the stateroom as well as the entertainment being pretty good on board, except with a couple drawbacks here or there, I'm going to give the hotel score for MSC Seaside, three and a half stars. Next up is Itinerary, the Ports of Call. We went to Nassau and their private island, Ocean Key Marine Reserve. In Nassau, we were there from noon until 7 p.m. You will remember from a previous video I did that Nassau is not one of my favorite ports. However, they did finish the construction on the revamping of that port and it looks very, very nice. I took a tour of the port and it is still a little bit under construction, but the venues look very, very nice with a lot of restrooms and shops available to you without having to go downtown. I am glad to report that Senior Frogs is now open as well as the very large straw market in downtown Nassau. I did hear from other guests that a lot of the downtown area is still somewhat depressed and a lot of the stores are still closed. I do recommend that you do an excursion in Nassau and the Blue Lagoon excursions, lots of different choices, is the one that I recommend. The next port was Ocean Key, and this is MSC's private island. It is a very, very nice island. The beaches are beautiful. There's lots to choose from. However, this is still not a mature island, so shade is somewhat hard to come by. You do have to rent your umbrellas as well as your float mats. Um, on most of the beaches, the Lighthouse Beach does have some limited umbrellas available. The Lighthouse itself is the venue that I like the most, and it is a very comfortable, nice area to attend. I did do the buffet this time on the private island, and I must say that it was better than the buffet on board the ship. One thing about this private island is that most itineraries allow you to stay at least until midnight, some are overnight, and they do have a very, very nice Nice light show on the lighthouse as well as a beach party with a DJ. This time, however, the lighthouse show was very, very short and the beach party itself was not very well attended. I do have a separate video for MSC's private island, so make sure that you click on the link at the end of this video or in the comments below. Now, for itinerary, ports of call, I did enjoy Nassau, though we were only there for a short time. The new port looks great, and Ocean Key Marine Reserve, their private island, is very, very nice. However, it seemed that they really cut back 
on the light show on the lighthouse and the beach party was not that great. So for itinerary, I'm gonna give it three stars. Let's move on now to plates, which is the food review. MSC notoriously gets dinged in this area and this sailing was no different. The food on board was extremely disappointing, except for one highlight, which I will mention. I ate in the main dining room three out of the four nights. I was at a table for eight since I was a solo traveler, and one out of the three nights was actually pretty good. I got the fisherman's platter, mussels for an appetizer, some white fish with a mango salsa, for dinner and it was very, very good. The rest of the nights, everything was either cold, bland, or not prepared very well. I did go to breakfast one morning in the main dining room and this is something I normally recommend on cruises to do the dining room rather than the buffet for breakfast. The morning I went, I got Eggs Benedict and some sides of bacon and sausage. The Eggs Benedict was cold and the hollandaise sauce on top was this rubbery blob that was cold and not very good. The bacon and the sausage were also cold and it was obvious that these items had been sitting out for a long time before they were served. I tried to send them back, but I couldn't get anybody's attention. There are two buffets on board, as I mentioned earlier, one on deck eight, which is the main buffet, and they have lots of different stations. Many of them, though, are repetitive, and there is an omelet and egg station at the very back of the buffet. One nice thing about this buffet is that it has abundant outside seating on both sides as well as in the rear. The food in the buffet was actually not very good, uh, sandwiches for lunch, the hamburgers, the buns were like hockey pucks. They were stale and hard. They're all pre-dressed and there isn't a lot of options for toppings, though there are condiments at the corners of each of the buffets. The pizza on board is supposed to be fantastic on MSC. I found it to be average to below average, cold and soggy. The smaller buffet on deck 16 by the main pool is a little bit easier to traverse. It seems that it's full of breads and pre-made sandwiches with the same mediocre pizza, but they do have some highlights with being able to make your own nachos. There's a kid's area with quesadillas, and they did bring out hot, freshly made cookies for one of the afternoons. The highlight for dining was my visit to Butcher's Cut, which is the steakhouse. I had an absolutely fantastic meal with a great Caesar salad, this huge um, seafood platter before the entree of a perfectly grilled ribeye steak with cheesecake to follow. I had a beautiful seat overlooking the ocean and being able to catch the sunset and the service there was absolutely spectacular. I do recommend if you can do it in your budget to get the dining package and visit many of the specialty restaurants rather than the main dining room. So for plates, food on board, I'm only going to give this sailing two stars. The final category is service. Service is all about the crew members that are guest facing, that are there to make sure that you have an enjoyable experience. So for service, my stateroom attendant, I never met the individual, so I can't really speak to the personality. However, they were efficient other than taking both of my pool towels and never replacing them. And I also asked for washcloths, never received them, and my mini bar was locked the entire time. So I suspect that it never worked. The bar staff tries their best. I believe that they are understaffed and they are overworked because they are pretty slow and pretty nonchalant about their job. 
at guest services, there's always normally a line, but they do have someone working the line. So if it is a quick question, they can resolve it there and the guest does not have to wait in the line. There is a tremendous language barrier at guest services and they don't normally understand what you're trying to ask them. They also don't seem to have access to the correct systems to actually help you with your problem. I had an internet issue, was directed by a crew member to guest services only to find out they couldn't help me and they sent me over to the photo desk where there was someone that was extremely helpful and took care of my problem right away. The private island staff seemed to be very helpful as well as friendly. And then of course, that specialty dining experience I had, the service was absolutely over the top. And I wanna thank all of the people at Butcher's Cut for allowing me to have such a fantastic experience. So for service, I'm going to give due to the cabin attendant as well as the guest services and a few other areas on the ship, I'm going to give service three stars. This leads me now to my final ship score on the MSC Seaside. Now, I really didn't know how I felt about this cruise until I was driving home in my car, spent a few days at home, and then I realized, well, this cruise was just mediocre. There were a lot of high points. I met some great people. I had that wonderful meal at Butcher's Cut with the amazing table with the scenery of the sunset, and there were some other highlights as well. However, there were some issues with the food, specifically the buffet, and a few other areas where MSC has some challenges um, ahead of them if they want to tap further into the U.S. market. So, averaging those five different categories, I'm giving my sailing on the MSC Seaside 2.9 stars. They have some improving to do, but I do feel that this still is a good value for those looking to get away for a few days on a cruise. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Now, I do have a few other MSC Cruises videos in this series, so make sure you check them out this one as well as this one. Thanks everybody for showing up today and as always, I'll see you again soon.